Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel text from Mark 9 is before us today. And we hear again these words where the Father said to Jesus, But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe. Help my unbelief. Thus far our text. And I think there are times where we can look back in life and know that by faith in Jesus, by His grace, that God's care and compassion were especially present and real. Maybe it was surviving an accident, beating a disease, or maybe the care and compassion you received that got you through a time of grief or depression. There are times, there it seems, that nothing will be able to shake us from Christ. And then there are those times where it's, where it's much harder to have faith and believe that God is really there for us. Living in a, as a Christian in this world, in this broken, sinful world, is filled with those mountaintop highs of, yeah, we can do everything in Christ through those valley lows where it seems that God is not near at all. And for those times where we are low or doubting God or struggling to see His will, today's text is there to assure us that Jesus is willing and able to uh, have our faith restored. Jesus and his disciples are returning from such a mountaintop kind of experience where he and James and John and Peter have uh, gone to the mountain to uh, uh, the Mount of Transfiguration. And they are coming down to meet up with the other nine, who we find in a confrontation with the area of scribes. And these teachers of the law were no doubt thrilled at what had just happened. They were seizing the moment to try to discredit and disgrace this whole movement of following Jesus because, well, the disciples had failed. Here again these words. Jesus asked, what are you arguing about with me? Someone from the crowd answers him, Teacher, I brought my son to you for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, foams and grinds his teeth, becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. Disciples couldn't get the job done. The fact is, however, they should have been able to do it. Jesus had commissioned them. He had sent them to go out to the villages and places ahead of where he was about to go to preach the good news, to, repeat, to preach repentance, and faith in the one who was to come, one in Jesus. And to prove that their message was true, that they were also authorized now to do miracles, to heal the sick, and to cast out the evil spirits. But this kind of spirit they had not encountered before. And their faith in God's power had faltered probably shows us that they had grown comfortable or perhaps even cocky with themselves. That is to say that they had faith in themselves rather in the one, rather than in the one who breaks the powers of darkness, of sin and evil. And because the disciples struggled, this father's faith was also struggling. Misery loves company, you know. And whenever we see someone close to us uh, is struggling, we tend to, to pick up on that and mimic that and dwell on that rather than what God would have us focus on. So the Father's faith struggle. He express, expresses his own weak faith when he says to Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And he's calling upon the one who can help. But the problem is that one little word, if. The man believed that Jesus could help, but his faith 
was shaken to the point now of having such doubt in his mind that nothing could be done. And saying, if, if you can help, if you can do anything. Jesus now shows us that he is there for those who even have the slightest, smallest faith and weak faith in him to restore and strengthen that faith. Jesus responds, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Jesus makes this prayer, this power personal. All things are possible for God, says the scriptures, but puts that power into our hearts, into our hands. To pray for the things that we know are in accord with God's will as we do in the Lord's Prayer. And in this day, on, on this occasion, the Lord is teaching us to pray that final petition to deliver us from evil. So all things are possible for the one who believes. Give the deliverance from the worst evils. Before Jesus would cure the boy, he first wanted to cure the father of his doubt. The real if was not whether Jesus had the power to do what the Father asked, for he does have the power. The real if was whether the Father believed that Jesus was true God and that he had the power and authority to do what he was asking. No doubt the stories of Jesus' previous healings and casting out of demons were probably known by this man. He knew what Jesus could do. That's why he was there. But his faith was shaken. The disciples couldn't get the job done. Maybe this one is just too much. His response to Jesus, though, is immediate. And we are invited to join in his prayer on a daily basis. A prayer that flows from sincere, yet even struggling faith. That faith worked by the Holy Spirit is always true, saving faith. And the Father cries out in faith, I believe, help my unbelief. While we live in this world, the devil will always be challenging our faith with ifs. The new man that is born and created in us by the Holy Spirit through the word and water of baptism believes what God says is true. But that old sinful flesh, that old Adam in us keeps popping up and keeps trying to poke the new man out, push him out of our hearts through the temptations of doubts and despair. When we're tempted by those ifs as we come off the mountain highs and into the valley lows of the Christian life, the Holy Spirit is there to move us to pray. I believe. Help my unbelief. It's a prayer offered in faith to our Heavenly Father because it shows that we recognize that when we're weak, God is strong. And we need our faith restored. Strength and restoration that come from God through His Word and sacraments. These are the means of grace that the Holy Spirit works through to get rid of our unbelief and create faith. Strengthen it. Jesus and His promises. When we're tempted to doubt whether Christ has forgiven our sins, even though those most horrible hidden sins that we would be so ashamed if anyone ever found out. The Holy Spirit assures us of our complete forgiveness through Jesus' death on the cross. We are sure of that as we hear that forgiveness in through our ears and into our mouths. God's promise is that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins, every single one. It's the word of promise spoken to you as we begin our service in the words of absolution. For I, as I call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in Christ's place, you hear him speaking that you are forgiven. We begin our service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The very name given to us in baptism to remind us that we have been joined to Christ's death and resurrection. And recalling these promises, you can be assured 
of your salvation. You can be certain of it. Because surely as Jesus lives, you also are forgiven and will live. You have no reason to doubt or fear. But when you do, you can pray in those troubling times. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Jesus is the one with all authority in heaven and on earth. We have no life, we have no authority in ourselves to get ourselves right with God, to, to forgive our own selves. Yet we're often tempted to take matters into our own hands. We often go through life without giving God much thought. We think we're strong enough on our own. We forget that we need to be frogs. That we need to fully rely on God. And so we are called to repent again and again to offer our prayers, offer our confession before our Lord. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And so leave here today with the absolute certainty that God has forgiven you, even with your doubts, even with your weak faith. Believe that Jesus has won the victory for you by his death on the cross and his glorious resurrection. Know that Jesus knows your fears and your doubts and your temptations. But also know that he will take command over them and cast them out, just as he does the evil spirits. Jesus restores your faith in him. So thanks be to God who works mighty deeds among us today by his grace and his spirit. Leave here today with your faith restored. Give God the glory all week long. For Jesus' sake, amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.